Hi, welcome to your substitute lesson for finding the equations of exponential functions. So if we take a look at the graph of exponential functions, notice that I am giving you the form of the exponential function, which is f of x equals a times b to the x plus 1. And so when you're looking at that, we're going to be trying, oh, sorry, plus c right here. And what we're going to be trying to do is we want to find the equation, the actual equation. Now, what we had done before is we had determined some information. We knew how um, A, B, and C were related to the graph, and we used that to determine kind of some information about these items. But we're going to be a little bit more careful and specific in this set of notes. So the one that was the easiest from the previous uh, discussion on the analyzing exponential graphs and equations was knowing what the value of C is. And if you recall, C it comes from your horizontal asymptote. So our horizontal asymptote in this problem is located here at x equal to negative 3. And since the horizontal asymptote is x equal to negative 3, the value of C in our equation is going to be negative 3. So that's always kind of the easiest thing to find that you're looking at. Now, the other thing is, is that we're going to be using, we would like to find the value of A. Now, what we know about A is we know that A is greater than zero. And the reason that we know A is greater than zero is because the graph is located above the X, or uh, above the horizontal asymptote. So here's the horizontal asymptote, and we're kind of shading the fact that the graph lies above that. And whenever that happens, you know that your A is greater than zero. And so what we want to do now is find an actual value for A. Now, they're asking us to use an actual point from the graph. When I give you this F of negative 1 equals negative 2, then what we know is that there is a point negative 1, negative 2 on this curve. And if we go over here and we plot it, you'll see that point located right there. And so as we're taking a look at this, and we're going to use that point, what we're going to do is we're going to plug that point into the equation. So our f of x, which you remember is another name for y, so we're going to plug in negative 2 equals a times our b, and we're going to plug in this negative 1 for x, negative 1 plus 1, plus our c, which was negative 3. And I'm going to go ahead and change that to a minus there. So we would have what essentially is going to end up being negative 2 equal to a times b to the 0 minus 3. So as we take a look at that equation, we'll remind ourselves that uh, b to the 0 is going to be equal to 1. So that's going to come and turn into negative 2 equals a minus 3, or a equals, add 3 to both sides, a equals 1. So we can pick a point on the curve, and we can plug it in. Now notice, I sort of picked that point, because in my head, as I was looking at this, I was thinking about what transformations had occurred. And so I was thinking about this as a shift to the, because it's x plus 1, then it would be a shift to the left of 1. So it went left 1. And so I was kind of thinking about if you were at the x-axis or at the y-axis and you shifted to the left 1, that when you look at that, that the point that would have been on the y-axis was this point negative 1, uh, negative 1, negative 2. And so that's why I picked that point to use. And the other reason that I picked it is because what I really wanted is I wanted this at, sorry, exponent, I can't think today, uh, this exponent to be equal to zero because when you get a zero exponent, then the B part is going to drop out of the equation and that will allow me a way to find the A and, and find a value for it. Now, once I have that value, at this point we know that our equation is going to be f of x equals the a I just found times b to the x plus 1 minus 3. So we've kind of found two of the items that we were missing from the equation. 
Now, we already knew that A was positive, but notice by using a point, you can actually find a value of A. Now it says use another point on the graph to determine the value of B. So for that one, and I like to pick nice points. Um, we can pick, uh, for example, right here, we've got 0, negative 1 would be an option. We could pick uh, here, it looks like 1, 1 would be an option. So, you know, it doesn't really matter which point you pick. Um, I'm going to go with the one that's 0, negative 1, because I think using a point that is 0, it has 0 involved in it, it's going to be a little easier. So, again, I'm going to plug in the negative 1 for the y, 1 times b to the 0 plus 1 minus 3. And 1 times b, of course, is going to be b to the first, which is just b, minus 3 equals negative 1. And so we will end up with our b, add 3 to both sides, is going to equal 2. So my final equation, then, after all of that work, is y equals my a, which is 1, I'm not going to write it, b, which is 2, to the x plus 1, and then minus 3. And we can verify that this works. Since I did not use this point right here, then what I can do is plug that in and let's check. So if I plug in 1 here, 2 to the 2 is 4, 4 minus 3 is 1, and it does check out. So you could test your equation after you get it and determine whether or not it does match the equation that we are looking at. All right, so let's look at another example. Again, same kind of idea. Now notice in this one, when I'm giving you the equation, I'm taking out the shift to the left. So this equation is simply the form a times b to the x plus c. So I'm going to start with the same thing that I started with before which is, let's find C, our horizontal asymptote is up here at um, 4, so C is going to equal 4, so we get that taken care of. And then we start looking at what points that we want to plug in in order to find the actual equation of this uh, exponential. Now, I would like to have a point that when you plug it in, you get a 0 for that exponent, and I look right here, and I see that I have 0, 2. So I'm going to use 0, 2, and I'm going to use that to get A. Because when you are looking at this, you want your exponent to go to 0, so the B is going to drop out, and then you can go ahead and find your A value. So I'm going to plug it in. 2 equals A times B to the 0 plus the 4. And then we're going to, b to the 0 is 1, so a plus 4 equals 2, and a would equal negative 2. And then we're done with finding the a. Let's put that in. So at this stage, we're at g of x equals, all right, so g of x equals negative 2 times b to the x plus that 4. So now our final step is to find B. So we're going to need to use a different point. So, you know, kind of putting this in, in steps, number one, write down your horizontal asymptote, use that to get your C. Number two, find a nice point, a nice point that will allow us to get the exponent that's on B to zero. So we'll think about what that point would be and go find it on the graph. And, and right now I'm giving you nice graphs. So you'll be able to pick a, a point for that. And that's why I picked this 0, 2, so that I would get 0 right there. And then found my A using that. Now I'm going to use, so this is now step 3, we're going to pick a different point to find. So on this one, I'm going to pick, it doesn't really matter, um, let's go with, we could do 1, 3. That's an option. So I could pick 1, 3. Let's look at this. We could also pick uh, 0, negative 1. Um, I'm going to go with the 0. Uh, oh, and you realize I just wrote it down backwards. That would be negative 1, 0. Negative 1, 0. So we could use one of those two points. doesn't really matter which one. Um, let's use the 1, 3 and see what happens there. So our g of x would be 3 equals negative 2 times b to the first plus 4. 
And now we need to solve for B. So subtract four, negative one, negative two B, B equals one half. Now let's think about whether that makes sense given what we learned last time. So when we look at this, we know that there, we found our A and our A was negative. So that tells us that there was a vertical flip, that the graph is below the horizontal asymptote. And we can see that in our picture, that our graph is definitely flipped down below the horizontal asymptote. So that A does make sense to us in this problem. Now, if you look at the B value, there was no horizontal flip. I know that there was no horizontal flip because that X is a positive. And when there's no horizontal flip, if I basically unflip this graph, so right now I have a bounded growth. If I unflip it and flip it back up, then that would be a bounded decay. And that makes sense that the base is between zero and one, which is what we would have known for that. So our final equation that we're gonna write down would be y equals our a value, negative two, times our b, which is one half to the x, and then plus our four, which is our asymptote. And so that is kind of the idea that you're using points and you're picking nice points to plug in to help you find those. And again, what do I mean by nice points? You're going to pick a point that is going to make your exponent up here zero first and plug that in. And then I actually like to pick a point that makes this exponent one, if possible, in the second stage. Um, and if I can do that, it doesn't always happen, but if you can pick points that work out nicely like this, it'll help you find your equations. All right? And again, does the values for A and B that we found make sense in this function? The answer is we found that A was a negative number and that makes sense because the graph was below your horizontal asymptote. So that absolutely does make sense to us. And then our base was between one and zero and that makes sense to us because we had a bounded growth graph. And when you have bounded growth, that the only way that that happens after you've had that vertical flip, and if you had no horizontal flip, that means that it must have been a decay parent to start with, okay? So no horizontal flip, bounded growth with no horizontal flip in the equation, and that was because there was a positive X in the equation that we know the decay had to be, the parent has to be a decay. And so that makes sense to us that the base is between zero and one. Okay, so now from this point on, and, and we just wanted to give you a little bit of a preview of that so that you could work a few problems. What I would like you to do is to try in your groups this problem and this problem. And I will come back in just a moment, pause the video right now and I would like your, whoever your sub is, if you would pause the video, let them work these two problems, and then we'll come back together and I'll show the answers. All right, so here we are back, and the first one is fairly straightforward, so go ahead and check your answer for those. Um, I plugged in zero, 03 and got the first sample of the equation. And then I plugged in the point 115 to get the second. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the third one. And as you can see, the first thing I did was I used this information that told me about the horizontal asymptote. So that gave me that C was 3. I plugged in the point 0, 02 to get A was negative 1. Now let's take a moment and I'm going to pause it and let you look at my work for this. And then I'm going to talk about it in just a second. So as you can see from my work here, and you may need to pause this and take a look at it, that this one was not as nice because our exponent and did not end up being one in that location. It was negative four. So what I had to do was to raise both sides to the negative one fourth in order to cancel that out and get a one in this location. 
All right, so I'm going to leave this up. Uh, the sub can pause it and you can take a look at this work. 